Hey Lee, welcome to Dublin. Thanks for having me, Dan. It's good to be back. In, yeah, absolutely. In, in a different capacity. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I suppose I'm recently retired, you know, the, this year or last year, sorry, but um, from your perspective, do, do you miss the game or uh, how do you look at the game now or is it something that you think about too often? Or? Yeah, I have a different perspective on it, I suppose. Uh, when I stepped away in 18 and uh, from the Dublin panel, went to Boston for the year, it was it was sort of, I was done, I was never coming back and, and I came back then for the for the 19 season, just the end of the 19 season. But I made my peace with it then, I think, I think I, I've played long enough, we've obviously won a few things, it's a little bit different from your perspective I suppose, maybe chasing that dream a little bit, bit longer like, but um, no, the free time is obviously good, starting a family and you know, getting back to the club and, and you know, doing, doing a few bits around there as well, it's, it's always nice and, and also to be a fan, and, and actually follow the games, you know, we're doing a bit of punditry or whatever and talking about them. I actually enjoy that a little bit. Um, I never enjoyed doing that, by the way, as a player, uh, reviewing games or reviewing teams or reviewing uh, the likes of yourself or whatever. Um, I, ne I never actually enjoy sitting down and doing that, but I am enjoying watching as a fan at the moment. And um, I certainly made my piece with it um, and I'm enjoying retirement at the minute. It's 2023. If Mayo won the All-Ireland this year, would you have regret of stepping away last year? And my opinion would be that you at least had two or three more seasons left in you. I thought you were Mayo's best performer last year when you retired. Um, and it was a real shock to me because I thought you were really one of their best defenders, if not their best attacker going forward as well. So um, I'm not saying it would be a regret, but what would you think if Mayo won this year? If Mayo won this year, um, I have the week booked off <laughs> in case. Um, and I'll celebrate, uh, maybe not Sergio Aguero style with uh, Argentina after the World Cup. but More like uh, Jack Reed, <laughs> <laughs> I've done it a few times before, but um, no, I think for myself, I'd love to see the likes of Edo, Killian, Kevin McLaughlin, those guys get over the line. And probably equally, they'd, they'd probably never feel worse for me not been involved. But if Kevin McStay picked up the phone on, on Friday and asked you to play on Sunday, would you put on the boots? Well, the fact is Dublin, I, I consider it. <laughs> <laughs> I have something here for you, Lee. <laughs> Can you explain? Do you, want to, do you want to elaborate on that incident? Um, genius is not probably the right word. <laughs> uh, the problem I was looking at were staring in the barrel off another All Ireland defeat. Mm. Is there anything possible we can do? Or you know, and I went a bit above the, the threshold, probably. <laughs> Definitely not one of my best moments, but again, I, I always kept saying is when you're staring in the barrel off here, I think it was. Was that our fifth All Ireland? Desperate times call for desperate sometimes. But then the, the, the killer for us was actually, it wasn't even the, the, this thrown, it, it's how you finish the game after. Uh, you just absolutely demoralised us when you got the ball back. And, and we probably, that was probably the best game we played collectively. Uh, like we scored 116 mm. and we still lost. That's the sign how good of a team we were and how much we, we respected you, Joe, because mm. it just, just wasn't enough against you. Uh, you are probably one of the best players that ever played the game. And whether you agree or not with that, that's stuff people like. I'm not going to let you go run around and score five points and, and, and go like this. Yeah, I do that when I was watching against other teams. Do you know? yeah. uh, did I go over the line sometimes? Absolutely. But, but, but at a high level, you have to have that bit of nastiness in you too to do that. Uh, yeah. And like Dublin in general, you did the exact same thing to us. Um, I just think sometimes, like the toss with you were brilliant because it was, again, one-on-one, -on -one, who's going to get the better of... Mm. And, I, and I knew the skill level you had in, in terms of what you were able to do and you were more... You're definitely never the structure player. You, you, you play it as what you see, mm. and they're they're the hardest players to figure out. Uh, so when I said to do homework, there was no ever doing homework on you because I couldn't. I couldn't. You're not doing it anyway. <laughs> yeah, You're so, too lazy. Yeah. <laughs> so like, just just some of the battles we had in general. Like, and I, it's funny. The the funniest member I have is when you came on in seventeen at half time, and we we're then the Cusick side, and you go, "This is great. You're not coming near me today." <laughs> you start laughing at me. The, no, the seventeen. You mark the Kenny in the, the first Kenny. half, and. Like Kilkenny came in at half time and it, like Kilkenny had been getting say 42, 43 possessions per game all season, mm. like regardless all season, even, even the season previous. And when he marked you, I think he had seven or eight possessions in that first half. And he came in at half time and he didn't know what hit him. Like he honestly didn't, his head was spinning. I remember it. Mm. We were walking down the tunnel and I said, just relax, just take a breath, just relax. Because he wasn't used to getting that full yeah. press, that full, like you didn't care anything about the football at all. It was more, not that you didn't care about the football. But that's how important he was. was. we yeah. had it, it was Kilkenny was your job and him not to get possessions. Yeah. And you done an unbelievable job on him in the first half. The first game in 15 where I was sent off, right at the end of the game, um, I remember sitting down with, or sorry, sorry, 16, I remember sitting down with Gary Keegan was doing a bit of sports psychology with at the time. You got in my head. Um, you had nullified me completely in the first game that we played. I think you got a goal. Um, 
and we went out in the replayed game and I remember saying to Gary, he was like, what can I do differently? Like, and his whole thing was just change your mindset. Forget about the opposition, forget about the player. What do you need to do and what positions do you need to get into to, to affect the game? And if you, uh, you probably don't remember this, but I stood out on the left-hand side of that wing underneath the Hogan stand for most of that first half. I, I actually remember that switch. I, I was thinking to myself, if he does this more often, then I'm in a bit more bother mm. because I'm not as comfortable back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or when I was you're more, my letter. You're more on the front foot. You yeah. want to get going and, and, you know. We finished with a nice tally each, though. We weren't too badly. Honours even, was it? Yeah, I won yeah, for each. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Happy days. But you've the medals. <laughs> <laughs>